Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a uh, disassembly video for you of this little guy right here. This is the HEA Designs uh, Venom. So, uh, this should be pretty straightforward, I hope. We have a screw and a screw, uh, and, well, technically a screw and a screw. We come in from this side because it's got, you know, a, the Torx head on it. But, um, there, 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 there is that. Um, let's go on ahead and, uh, start taking this guy apart. Hopefully we'll be pretty quick. Looks like a T8 in the pivot here. And... There we go. That came out pretty straightforwardly. Um, this is actually the second time I've uh, I've uh, started this video. I got interrupted the first time quickly enough that I uh, didn't, you know, bother restarting it. But I did actually have some thread locker on this very first one, uh, which meant that I needed to get out my higher torque handle uh, to pop that loose there. And so, uh, but I went ahead and retightened things and just restarted the thing. Got a freaking phone call. And when you film on your phone, that's one of the liabilities, so to speak. But anyways, um, we now have the two screws that hold this guy together out. We'll grab control of the blade there. That way, as the thing disassembles itself, the part that can cut me isn't uh, floating around. And there we go. What we see here is um, not a whole lot of interest, uh, right? We see copious amounts of internal milling in this area here. It's really clear how this has ended up being a relatively lightweight knife. We see that I am a jackass who left the bottle of rubbing alcohol on his desk because I was cleaning off my uh, mouse earlier with it. But um, we see here, aside from that, the thing is running absolutely bone-freaking-dry, so the action, which was good to start, will probably just be about to get better, which is a beautiful thing. Aside from that, we do see a reinforcing pin in the back here, uh, which one would expect on a knife that has very little, um, very few other screws, so to speak. Um, and honestly, there's... There's really not much here, and I uh, there is a lock bar insert, which, you know, we can tell from this external screw, but it's also very much present here, and that's going to lead to a uh, lock stick free lockup, which is true indeed. We see the lanyard hole here. Uh, well, okay, the lanyard tube. Uh, the lanyard affair, whatever that is, it's 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 a thing. I'm I'm gonna go on ahead and I'm gonna drop this pin onto this side, just that way this whole backspacer is kept in the proper alignment. As we're doing this, and I'll go on ahead and clear this off. Just using some rubbing alcohol on a fabric swatch. And by the way, if you're curious about any of the tools I'm using here today, go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools, and you will see all of the, uh, the, 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 the possibilities here. Um, the pivot is not free spinning from the feel of it, and they have managed that by virtue of having this little kind of D-shape on the uh, pivot, as well as, yep, right there, there's a little island right there in this hole, which makes that, uh, prevents the pivot from spinning freely, which is a beautiful thing. Um, especially when one side of the pivot is not tooled, meaning there's no screw hole on this side. That is not just beautiful, that is crucial. Otherwise, this would be a majorly flawed design. So, well done there. On the whole, not a whole heck of a lot going on in here, and I say that without any, you know, shame or anything like that. It's just, it's simple. The internal milling's great. The design works. Easy freaking peasy. This was actually a case in which I, I put the cart before the horse, so to speak. I, I actually wrote the review before I uh, filmed the disassembly. I could have sworn that I filmed the disassembly of this knife, but I did not. Uh, and so I, you know, I, I sat down as I was getting ready to do my review, and I will occasionally, if it's been a little while, I'll, you know, pull up my video uh, about the uh, my disassembly and just make sure there was nothing in there I needed to mention, right? And uh, like, huh, I wonder where it is. And so I was looking, and I wasn't finding. So sure enough, um, I'm doing this one post hoc. Uh, which is fine. There's no real harm in it. It's just a thing. Uh, we got the detent ball up here, and I'm going to use some 10-weight nano oil here, although knife pivot lube would have worked just as well in this particular case. Uh, but just filling the detent ball hole there with some oil, as well as put a little bit here and a little bit here. That way that can be distributed by the bearing. I'm going to go ahead and drop this on here. Hoping we're going to run even a little bit smoother than we did before. 
uh, now that we've done that. Oh, one other little tiny thing to note here that's not externally visible, uh, well, just barely, is, th is this little guy right here. This, uh, this little tab is a um, lock bar over travel stop. What that basically means is that um, it, this isn't something that's absolutely crucial, but if you bend a lock bar too far in this direction, because you, it's a springy metal, right? Titanium, it could get to the point where you go past its, its modulus is springification. That's not the engineering term. But anyways, you go past the amount it can spring, and then it stays out here, or the tension changes. This little tab prevents me from pushing too far in this direction, um, which means that I will never be able to do that, which is a great idea, right? Um, this was something I think Really, Rick Hinderer uh, was the first person to really bring to the production world, as I recall. Um, maybe other people did it first, uh, but at the same time, generally the Hinderer lock bar stabilizer is sort of the one that people refer to. But um, anyways, it's, it's a good thing. Um, there is no reason not to have it, and uh, it is a joy to see it here. So it's nice, but on the whole, this is pretty simple. Um, and that's great. Simplicity in a simple tool is something one should be praising. If by one you mean extra bash. All right. Um, so using a little bit of thread locker on a stick here, I can drop the pivot into position here. And I'm not going to fully tighten it or anything because the other side ain't in yet. But I just sort of want to get things. Eh, let me get the other side in. That way it provides a little bit more stabilization. Just dip a little bit of thread locker in there, and again, not aiming to really crank it down. But the goal here is now to get the knife closed, because when the knife is in a closed position, by the way, hold on, um, when the knife is in a closed position, the lock bar is, uh, it's exerting pressure, but it, it should, it, it, there's not as much weird geometry for it to get stuck in, so I can tighten this down. But one thing I'm, I, the second thing I was about to point out there is that it's important to make sure that this is in the proper orientation, because remember, this had that D shape to it. So if I hadn't had that oriented, this part would be sticking up still. It would be proud of the pivot here. We'd see it up there, or above the surround, that is. And as a result, the knife wouldn't go together right. Um, it might tighten down okay, but then that would snap into place, and suddenly it'd snap. It's when it snaps, we'd slop into place, and uh, then suddenly, boom. Okay, we have no play. Centering is actually a little difficult to tell with this knife because of how buried in there the uh, the blade is, but it's fine as near as I can tell. And the action is uh, as good, if not better. I'm going to see if I can loosen this up just a hair. And if that gives me anything. No, blade play is what it gave me, so... <laughs> There is a point at which, um, a little bit more, is a point at which you sort of develop a natural feeling for a torque uh, with a given tool, and, you know, like, okay, that feels about right. And that is one of the things that, as I've disassembled enough knives, I, I think I'm starting to get there. I'm not saying that's as good as using a torque wrench, I'm just saying I'm finding more off and I'm nailing the proper pivot piv uh, tension which is great, not like tooting my own horn or anything like that. That's not something you, you know, advertise to the world, right? If I were, <laughs> if I were Mary, put that on online dating, I can reliably both estimate the size of a Torx bit that I'm looking at and tension the pivot properly without using a Torx wrench. Oh, man, that, that milkshake could bring all the... In this case, gales to the yard. But anyways, hope this has been interesting to you. The knife is pretty straightforward to take apart. That was uh, nine minutes, and that was with me luxuriating a little bit in the process. Hope this has been interesting to you. Keep an eye out for the full review, which uh, I've already written oddly. And uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.